Stand on our feet, sing hymn number 564. Hymn number 564, as we stand on our feet, he keeps me singing as I go on the first. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still. In all of life, seven. In 572, in my heart there rings a melody. Sing it out on the first. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody.
something wrong and the clock still says 5.58. Man, that means I got a lot of time to preach tonight. Amen. So every time I look, it'll just say 5.58. Amen. We'll be good. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Thank you for your goodness, your strength. Lord, I'm just grateful that uh, we have a place to worship. I'm still grateful that with all that's going on, we still have religious liberty in this nation. We have the ability to meet without fear, and Lord, I'm grateful tonight. I'm grateful for each one that's here. I pray for those that are sick that could not be here, that you would touch them and lift them up. Pray for those in our church that will be traveling this week, quite a bit of traveling. I pray you give safety. And I'm just asking you to move and guide and direct in a tremendous way as we try our best to do what's right tonight and bring you honor and glory. May you meet with us. May the Spirit take over. And may we have a service that would change us uh, from the inside out, in Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. and amen. Y'all may be seated. Good to see everyone tonight. Glad y'all made it. And um, so we're just uh, looking forward. We've got quite a few things coming up in the church in the next few weeks. We've got uh, uh, next Sunday. Uh, and so this is your second warning. So I'm off the hook twice. Father's Day is next Sunday. Uh, usually the ladies will remember it, you know. All you got to do is go to the thrift store and buy some ties, so it's not all that big a deal, right? But uh, uh, no, we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a special service next week. We will have gifts for the fathers and looking forward to what the Lord does. Sunday, next Sunday is Father's Day. The following week, we have two things going on. Uh, in the evening service, we'll have the college group from Lone Star Baptist College coming and a group of ladies this time. And that's, uh, that's uh, it's always been men before that, but we got the group of ladies this time. And so we're looking forward to that. It's going to be a good service. Uh, they'll be presenting the college, singing. Uh, uh, Brother Butler will be preaching and all that good stuff. That's in two weeks. And then after the evening service, after the service, so you come for the service, going to have the group from Lone Star, and then all young people 12 years old and above, we will be having a youth activity afterwards called an afterglow. That means you just keep on glowing after the service. And so we're going to have food and games and all that good stuff. So that's coming up in two weeks. And then three weeks from today is 4th of July. And 4th of July falls on Sunday this year. And so we will be, uh, we already talked this morning about we're going we're gonna to do again our, our 4th of July barbecue. So you can come to the church and have some of the good hamburgers and hot dogs. The all beef hamburgers and I'm not sure about the hot dogs, amen, but uh, I try to even get the all beef hot dogs. A anybody in agreement that we should get all beef hot dogs? Keep they it kosher. What's that? Keep it kosher. Keep it kosher. <laughs> it's not Hanukkah. Uh, no, I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, we, we, we try to do that. We get best. I'll raise the money next week. We always raise the money to get the good meat, right? We want the good meat. Uh, but we're going to have a good time. We always have a big day. We'll have a special service and we'll have our meal. We'll have a special time in the afternoon, go home and uh, enjoy everything. And by the way, you can't use the excuse of fireworks because we're doing it all in the daytime. All right. And you can't use the excuse of fireworks because Harlingen does theirs on the third. So, uh, uh, but we're going to have a great day. We, we got a lot of things coming up. We're excited. It won't be very long down the road where we're, we're going to be back fully in Sunday school, back fully in the bus ministry. We decided to take some time and do some training and teaching and so that we can start off right and do things right. And so we, um, that's not very far down the road. A lot of things going on this summer you're gonna to wanna to be a part of. Come help us on Saturdays. Uh, uh, we, are, we are going out and having a great time talking to people and uh, passing out materials and tracks and, and having a good time on Saturdays. There are some folks that go out on Sunday afternoon also. If you are interested, if you're a lady and interested, Sister Linda goes out 
on Sunday afternoon. And we're also looking to start another time during the week. We got some folks that are, it's hard for them to come on Saturday. So we're looking to start a time in the week. So there's lots of opportunities to go out and spread the word of God. Uh, we are supposed to be witnesses, right? right? We are supposed to be witnesses. And so that's what we want to do. And just a lot of things going on this summer. Uh, don't miss out on any of it. Get involved in your church. Get involved. Amen. It's going to be a good time. Good time. And to the best of our ability, we'll keep it kosher. Amen. All right. Amen. But uh, uh, what a blessing. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be fun. It, it, we haven't had a 4th of July on Sunday in a while. I can think last time it was a leap year thing where it leaped to Monday. You know, it went over, and uh, so it hasn't been a while, so we'll be able to celebrate together, and I appreciate that. Brother, let's do some more singing. <laughs> well, let's take your Central Baptist Church hymnals. We're going to sing some new songs, amen? So I like it. Well, they're new to us, but they're pretty old, amen? They're underneath the, most of them are underneath the other, the other songbooks, yes. Yeah. So we're going to be singing hymn number 31. Hymn number 31, everybody will be happy Amen. over there. Sister Linda's going to play through for us. We all listen, and we'll try to sing it. We'll get four chances to sing it. Sister Linda will go through it like we did the last one. 
more of a slower song, trying to encourage the Christian to keep pressing on. Amen. Plan to sing tonight, amen.
chapter number six tonight Ephesians chapter number six Ephesians chapter number six Amen. Ephesians chapter number six we're going to read the first nine verses of Ephesians chapter six verse number one through verse number nine Ephesians 6, 1 through 9 says this, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Amen. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters do the same things unto them, Forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also in heaven, uh, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. Amen. The Bible is a very practical book. Amen. Uh, people want to talk about the mystical and it's hard to understand and the, and the great deep mysteries. And there, there are mysteries in the word of God. Um, we're still all learning, growing. There's things that we will never fully understand until we get to heaven. But in its essence, the Bible is a practical book. It, it deals with our relationship with God first. Because you have to have your relationship with God right first. But then the Bible is just chock full of good advice on how to deal with others, how to live with others, how to serve others, how to be around others. We... We've created a Christianity, it, it, it's interesting, but it's almost as if we've created a Christianity uh, that believes that the Bible deals with all the higher spiritual things, but it doesn't really apply to the nitty-gritty of life. And that's a wrong thinking. Because the Word of God gets down to the nitty-gritty details of life. The book of Proverbs is just chock full of advice about finances, about uh, work habits, about the right type of people to hang around and not to hang around, the way to treat people, the way to be around people. All through the New Testament, you see the Bible talking about how as a church, we should be dealing with each other. This here is dealing with how we're supposed to deal with the world. And we do it um, as unto Christ. Children... You say, oh, they just all, the adults just like to always pound on us about obeying our parents. The reason you ought to obey your parents isn't because they said so. Amen. You know why you should obey parents? Because the Bible says in verse number one, it's right. That's right. It's right. Now you ought to do it when they say, because I said so. But the ultimate thing is, is you ought to be wanting to obey your parents because it is right. It's right. And who are you trying to please? Your master in heaven. You should, I, I, I like verse one and two. That's not where we're going to focus our attention tonight, but I like verse one and two because it, in many ways it deals with, there's a transition period between childhood and adulthood. Right. And, and when you're a child and you are in your parents' home or as long as you're dwelling in your parents' home, uh, there needs to be obedience. But even outside of the home, 
When you are a big bad adult and you're out of the home, the Bible still says you're supposed to honor your father and your mother. You need to honor them. Uh, I, I remember, I, I think, uh, a lot of times when, when we, we would take trips and, and my parents would, would worry, you know, because we were on the road and we had Jonathan and, and she, they knew many times we were leaving tired and coming back even more tired, you know. And so they would worry. So when we left, uh, I would call my mom and dad and say, we're on the road. When we got there, I'd call them back and say, we got here. When we got back, I'd call and say, we got home. Did I have to do that? No. Now, there was a couple of times when like four hours later, I'd call them up and say, hey, we got here. Because uh, I forgot. Uh, but, you know, I would try to because that was an honor thing. That was a, that was a helping them. I, I tried as they got older to, it, it was not easy transitioning from being the, the, the child to being the one that had to make the decisions. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It's a hard thing. But I tried to give them their dignity and I tried to honor them to the end. Why? Well, I love them, but, but also because it's right. We, we need to learn to honor our parents. Just because you get out of the home doesn't mean that you should just run wild and do whatever you want. You shouldn't be bringing shame and, and reproach and we should be honoring our parents. And we should be doing that because our master wants us to. It deals with parents. It says, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Well, parents love that first verse. But verse 3 goes with it. You know that, right? That's right. Yeah. Parents, in your demanding obedience of your children, you need to be right also. Right. And you need to be treating them properly. And you need to be doing things the right way. You used to always just make me shake my head when... When, when parents would get so upset because their child, uh, um, because their child drank some alcohol when their whole house is full of alcohol. And I go, you're provoking them. You're putting temptation before their eyes. You're provoking them. Uh, sometimes we're, we're unreasonable. We're not supposed to provoke. We're supposed to be fair. And honest, and we're supposed to treat them. And, and that, I'm going to tell you this right now, parents that saying, do as I say, not as I do, that provokes children. That's right. We're the examples, right? But we are to do that because it pleases God. Why? Because we're supposed to be able to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But then it deals with this matter of servanthood. And it talks about the practical side is. We do service to people on this earth. We're not in the same biblical situation. Uh, many times servants, when it talks about servants and masters, it's talking about because they were their owners. They were their, they were, they actually belonged to, they were, we would have called them slaves. They had literal owners of them. Of, of them. But all of us, in one way or another, serve others. If you have a job and you're not the boss, guess what? You serve a boss, right? You serve them. Sir. Oh, you say, well, then I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to get to the point where I'm the boss. Well, then you serve the government. Because the boss has to keep track and pay the government and has to make sure that all the regulations, right? All the regulations and all the meetings and all the stuff. We all serve somebody. We all do service. You're out there on that road. You're, those roads, you're supposed to obey the law, right? If you don't break, obey the law, an authority is going to pull you over, right? We all have to deal with servanthood. And he talks about obedience to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of heart. Look at this. As unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleases, but as the servants of who? Servants of Christ. Doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service as to, the, as to the Lord and not to men. 
Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. Look at verse 9. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. If you're saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a master. And your master is in heaven. It used to be a thing when, when I was younger, the young men would say, I, I, I'm tired of the home and I'm tired of the rules, so I'm going to join the military. I told you the story of Brother Victor down in Brownsville. He had that situation where he had these teenagers in his church, didn't want to listen, didn't want to obey, didn't want to follow rules, didn't want to do anything. And so they, they rebelled and they left the church. And, and then he walked into a restaurant one day and there was, both of them were uh, uh, waiters and working in the restaurant. Ah, this is not, this is. So he said the whole time he was there, he just had them running. I want you to go do this. I want you to go get this. And they had to do it with a smile. They had to do it with a smile. Because he was the client. You know? But if you're a Christian, we live in a world where everybody wants to say, if I, I'm my own person. Not as a Christian. That's right. And by the way, nobody's their own person. Because if you're lost, your father is the devil. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're in bondage to him. So either way, you have a master. Yeah. It's either Satan or yourself or God. But, but God is your master. You have been, the Bible says you have been bought with a price. So you belong to who? God. You belong to God. You, he is your master. Whether you are the servant or the master here on earth, he is still your master. And he talks here about service. When we get to heaven, what you are going to want to hear is the words, well done, thou good and faithful boss. And that's not King James. Well done, thou good and faithful and, and, and faithful, brilliant genius. Uh, that's not King James either. You're going to want to hear God say what? Well done, thou good and faithful. Servant. Good and faithful what? Servant. Good and faithful servant. This is, a, all generations kind of get a reputation. It's a general reputation. It's not everybody within that generation. There are young people in this generation that are honest and hardworking, but what this generation's reputation has become is entitled. They are entitled. In other words, they feel like they just deserve because. And what we have lost as worldliness creeps into the church, we've lost the idea of servanthood. That we have a master who we're supposed to serve. And we are supposed to serve each other because we're serving the master. So this is how it works. We all serve each other because we're doing service to the master. So he says you serve your masters if you're a servant. If you're masters, don't be an overlord. Don't be, don't be cruel. Don't be bad to your employees because you're serving the master. Everybody serves everybody, right? We're all servants. If anyone had a right to claim something, it was the Apostle Paul. But how did he start a lot of his books? Paul, a servant of the Lord. A servant of the Lord. We are, we have lost the concept in churches of service. We're looking to be served. When what God wants out of us is service. Service to each other. Looking to find a place to serve. Looking to find a place, uh, Christianity and churches have become full of people that are passive. They want to sit on the sidelines and look. They want to be fed all the time. But even baby birds get kicked out of the nest. 
right? Mama stops feeding them and says, now it's time, your time to fly and go and have babies and feed them. Even in nature, you don't get served all the time. Comes a moment when that is done. We need to learn to be servants. And the first thing we need to recognize is that everyone serves a master. Everyone serves a master. I am my own man. I pulled myself up by the bootstraps and I made it on my own. It's my body. It's my life. I am my own person. You can't tell me what to do. Everybody has a master. Everybody has somebody pulling the strings. First of all, if you're a lost man, you serve Satan and the old man. Your old nature many times dictates to you what you do. And it'll lead you into sin. And as the song that we sang the, for the special this morning, sin will take you farther than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. The old nature is the sin nature and all the old nature did. You thought that you were doing it on your own. Your old nature brought you into bondage. So you either serve your old nature and your old nature is turned however Satan wills. Satan is the master of the lost man. You say, he's not my master. Yes, he is if you're lost. Because if you're lost, you're going to the same place he's going. You're both going to go to hell. That's right. Isn't that the Bible? Yeah. By the way, don't be scared of hell. That's a Bible word. Yeah. It's not a cuss word. It's a Bible word. It's the place of condemnation. It's the place where we go if we're lost. And Satan will drag you there willingly and gladly. Be sober, be vigilant, because your, your adversary, the devil, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And the lost man is under his lash and under the control of the old man. And then you get saved. And you become a servant of God. But not all servants of God are serving God. Even Christians can have other masters. You do realize that there is the carnal Christian, right? Yeah. A Christian who acts like a lost person. Now the old man is dead, right? You're not serving the old man. But what is not dead is your flesh. This flesh is still with you. This that desires all things that are bad. There's nothing, you hear people say, well, most people are basically good. The Bible says in our flesh there is no good thing. No good thing. And you as a Christian can begin to serve your flesh. Give in to the worldly desire, the fleshly desires. Just, just give in. Uh, there's people this morning that gave in to the fleshly desire to sleep instead of go to church. We give in to the fleshly desire of sleeping instead of reading our Bible. Doing what we want to do instead of doing the things of God, right? That's right. If you had the option tonight to be here or to be taken to your favorite restaurant and somebody takes you there and says you can order anything on the menu what would your flesh rather do be sitting eating a big old medium angus beef steak right if it was up to you whether you were in church or able to do the the your favorite activity your flesh would rather do the favorite activity. That's why we can't serve the flesh. Because in the flesh, there is no good thing. So you're going to either serve God as a Christian, you're going to see the serve the flesh, or you can serve the world. This world will reel you in 
And this world will allow you to do, you think you're doing what you want to do, and the world is pulling the strings. The world is pulling the strings. You ever heard the story of Pinocchio? Remember when he got caught and he, they were, they were, and he thought that he, you know, he ran away from Geppetto and he thought it, everything was good and he, he got over there and he got caught by the circus people. Remember he got drawn into the circus and then before you know it, they've got him as a wooden puppet. He's doing whatever they wanted. Boy, you'll be drawn in. Cain was told if you want to, sin is lying at the door. It's right there waiting for you. And it'll reel you in and you'll think you're in control. And before you know it, this world will be di dictating how you live and what you do. One of the saddest things to see is a Christian controlled by the world. Just always giving in to the world. Always doing what the world wants to do. Always doing what the world wants to say. Because we have been bought with a price. The Bible says ye are not your own. You have a master that is in heaven. And for someone that can have the greatest master of all to go to the world or to give in to your flesh, what a shame for a Christian to serve the flesh or serve the world. We're all going to serve someone. If you're lost tonight, your father is the devil, you're under the control of the old man. When you get saved, you become a new creature. Now God is your master, but you can go back to the world. You can return, as the Bible says, as a dog to its vomit. You can live according to the flesh. Everyone here that's been saved for any period of time knows somebody that tonight that is living according to the flesh or in the world. People that used to be faithful that are not. People that used to and are no longer. What did they do? They had the greatest master of all, the God of heaven, who saved their soul, bought them with a price, and they decided, I'd rather serve the world or the flesh. What we need to decide is we're going to serve the God of heaven. We're going to do what the God of heaven wants us to do. He is my real master. He is my real master. And I'm going to serve the God of heaven. So we need to have an attitude of service towards the master. An attitude of service. By the way, it doesn't matter how good a relationship you have with people. There's just times when it's hard to serve each other. Serving people, it's hard. Why? Because we're all human. And we're all stubborn. And we're all proud. And we all can be grouchy and we all can be ungrateful, right? Hmm. Did that for that even say thank you? Sometimes we just forget. But well, we're human, right? So if you're doing things to please others and you're doing things for the flesh or you're doing things for the world, that's really discouraging. But when you begin to realize we're serving each other with all of our warts with all of our problems, with all of our weaknesses, we're serving each other, but we're doing it for him. That makes all the difference. It's so much easier when you're serving him to serve others. And we need to have the right, mass, right attitude of service toward our master. Go to 1 Chronicles chapter 28. 1 Chronicles chapter number 28. 1 Chronicles chapter number 28. I want you to look at verse number 9. If you look in 1 Chronicles chapter number 28, verse 9, it says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. But notice how he tells him to serve. Remember, you're talking about the man that's going to be the king. The top of the heap. 
And God is saying you need to serve. And he says, and this is how you need to serve. He says, you need to serve with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Service for God comes from the heart. And if it's not from the heart, you'll get discouraged, you'll get frustrated, and you'll quit. Because if it's not heartfelt, if it's done for whatever other reason, you'll get tired of it quickly. You'll get frustrated with it. But when you're just serving God from your heart, when you're just giving of yourself, and when you're doing it for the right reasons, and you're doing it, you're doing it with, with, with just joy in your heart and a desire to serve God, could it be that that is why the, the, the law and the prophets hang, hung upon, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind? Amen. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself? If we're going to be able to serve each other and serve God, We've got to have the right heart attitude. We've got to be doing it for the right reason. If you're doing it just because, or if you're doing it to please me, or if you're doing it because that, that's, that's what you've always done, or that's your habit, it'll either become a routine, or you'll get frustrated with it. But when it's for God, and you know it's for God, even when it gets hard, even when people aren't lovable, even when it's not easy to do, when you've got a heart that's right with God and you sit there and you go, you know what? Whatever happens down here, I'm doing this for the God of heaven. By the way, did the Lord Jesus serve us? Isn't that one of the, one of the last great lessons he taught them before he went to the cross was to wash feet, to be a servant? The people that Jesus was serving, were they always good people? Were they always grateful people? Were they always mature people? Did, he have, did, did the disciples ever give Jesus a headache? <laughs> hey, Mom, go talk for us and ask if we can sit on one side and the other one on the other side. Peter, you're not going to the cross. Don't you think Jesus was just going? Come on, Peter. Right? But he loved him, didn't he? You know what? I, and I know, I know I use this all the time, but it just always amazes me. It amazes me. Judas is coming to him and he calls him friend. Gotta be honest with you. Somebody's coming to kill me. I'm probably not calling him friend. Somebody's coming to betray me. I'm probably not gonna call him friend, right? But Jesus did. Because he had a different type of heart. He had a servant's heart. He loved Judas even with what Judas was going to do to him. Father, forgive them. In our study of Baptist history, can't remember which one of the martyrs was that as they were going to, as they were going to martyr him, Father, forgive them. How do we have that hard attitude? When we realize we're not serving each other for the sake of each other. We're serving the master. And we do it from a pure heart and a perfect heart. Then look what else it says there. It says in verse 9, Know the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. So not only do you need to serve him with a perfect heart, but you need to serve him willingly. Service is a matter of the heart, but it's a matter of your will. And the only way you're going to be able to serve him with a willing mind is if you have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then what does it talk about? He humbled himself. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. It talks about his servanthood. And we have to have the mind of Christ if we're going to be the right type of servant. We're not doing it for others. We're not doing it uh, uh, just, just to please others. We're doing it for him. And we're going to have a willing mind. You ever done something that had to be done, but you were irritated? They can't pick up their own stuff. Come on, I'm always the one that has to wash the dishes. 
That doesn't make sense. That, it just seems like, you know, why didn't let anybody else do it? You know, you can do it and not have the right mindset. You can stomp and snort and pout and drag the garbage bag and all the stuff and, and, and get irritated and why isn't anybody else? You could have the wrong mind about service. But if we're going to serve the master, he's telling Solomon here, it needs to be with a willing mind and a perfect heart. The right type of outward service begins with the right type of inner relationship with God. I just want to do whatever God wants me to do. And if that means cleaning up after somebody else, I'll clean up after somebody else. If that means cleaning a toilet, I'll clean a toilet. If that means washing a floor, I'll wash a floor. If that means taking somebody somewhere, I'll take them somewhere. I just want to serve God. I want to do what God wants me to do. You've heard people, they talk about people and they say, well, their heart just wasn't in it. You ever heard that before? Their heart just wasn't in it. They should never say that about us as Christians. Right. Our heart should always be in it. Right. I'll do it because nobody else will. I'll do it because Brother Matt and then this and that and the other. No. We do it because we love our master. We do it because we want to be obedient to the master. And we do it with a heart that's perfect before God and a willing mind. I'll do it. God, you need somebody to serve. I'll do it because you're the master. I'm just the servant. We need to serve him willingly. We need to serve him with a perfect heart. The sad thing about 1 Chronicles 28, 9 is when you study the life of Solomon, you know that he didn't always serve him with a perfect heart, did he? That's right. And he didn't always serve him with a willing mind. The contrast between Proverbs and Ecclesiastes is amazing. Where in Proverbs, he's teaching him how to live on this earth, but serve the master. And in Ecclesiastes, he's teaching him, he's teaching about how to have everything, but under the sun. It's sad. But he started out perfectly. With a perfect heart and a willing mind. Then go to Psalm chapter 2, verse number 11. Psalm 2, 11. We're talking about how to serve and the attitude to have of service toward our master. Everyone serves a master. You do realize that Matthew chapter 5 was written to the Christian, right? Where it says you cannot serve two masters. So even Christians can get into having a different master than the one they're supposed to have. But our Father in heaven is our master. And we need to serve him with a willing mind and a perfect heart. But then in Psalm uh, chapter number 2, verse number 11, look at this. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge right? or wisdom. I always get it mixed up. It's knowledge, right? Beginning of knowledge. God wants us to have the proper fear of our master. I'm not afraid that he will condemn me to hell. I don't have any fear of that. You know why? Because he saved me and promised not to. But I do want to be right with him. And I do fear displeasing him. And I don't want to feel the chastising rod of the Father. And I do want to do things properly because he's my father. Don't, wouldn't, don't you have any fear of displeasing your, fa your master? That's a scary thing. Maybe there's a lot of Christians, I don't even think they, they, it matters to them whether they please God or not. That's scary, isn't it? Because we're supposed to have the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. And so we serve him with fear. That will help you not to treat him with disrespect. It bothers me when people use slang terms for God. It bothers me when we want to treat him as if he's just like us. God is not like us. God is high and holy. He is exalted. He is pure. 
He is many of the things that we are not and only are through Jesus Christ. Our God is so much greater and he should be given the respect. We respect people on earth more than sometimes we respect him. And that's not how it should be. We should enter into his presence with reverence, respect, honoring our father. Serve him willingly, with a willing mind, with a perfect heart, with fear. Then look Psalm 100, verse 2. Psalm chapter number 100, verse number 2. Serve the Lord with what? I get to serve the Lord. Sometimes we act like we are somehow blessing God with our service. Let me explain to you something. God, with very little effort, could do what we do much better than we do it. We're not as important as we think we are. We're not as talented as we think we are. Because God, in one word, was able to put the sun in the sky. God, with his word, was able to create this world. Got to be honest. I'm a Schumacher. We like to talk. But I've never been able to speak anything into existence. Other than I wish he'd get done. Uh, but uh, I, I just, you know, we, we don't have that power, right? He's so much more than we are. He could do things differently, but he chose us to be his servant. And that ought to make us glad. We're not giving him some type of privilege with our service. He gives us a privilege to serve him. You get to serve the God of heaven. That ought to make you glad. That ought to make you excited. Sunday school teacher, when we get back in class, that ought to get you up in the morning. You ought to get up in the morning with all the aches and the pains and with all of the, the, the you worked hard all week and with all of the struggles. It ought to get you up and say, I may be limping a little bit and I may need four cups of coffee, but with those four cups of coffee, I'm glad I get to serve the Lord. Amen. Bus workers always tell you, I'd be here and I... Come in and say, morning. Mm. Not all of them. <laughs> it's a good bus captain. She's defending her workers. Amen. <laughs> but what are we like? Hey, you're serving the Lord today. You get to serve him. I'm not saying be that fake and pony, plaster some fake smile on your face and pretend like nothing's ever wrong. That's not what I'm talking about. But on a general rule, we ought to have some happiness. We get to serve the Lord. We get to serve the Lord. We've been talking about, we go out on Saturday, and one of the benefits, of course, the benefit is we're getting the word out, and we're, we're being obedient to God. That's a great benefit. One of the great benefits we have is we have great fellowship. We enjoy spending time together doing what we're doing. We go down the road, and we're talking, and we're having a good time, and then we get, then we get done, and we realize the car is 18 blocks that way. You know, and we got to walk back in the heat, and it's hot and sweaty, but we're having a great time. We're talking, right? Good time, enjoying, enjoying ourselves, and, 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 and just that there ought to be a joyousness and a gladness. I get to serve the Lord. What a privilege to serve the Lord. What a privilege. I have older pastors in the faith that I respect very highly. And there's been some times when I've gotten to spend time with them. And it's just been a joy to be around them. It's been a joy. They've gotten older and sometimes I'm the young guy. I had a pastor that asked me to help him put his shoes on. I was glad to do it. It was a joy and it was a privilege. I respect those men. I I, 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 I wanted to help them. How much more the God of heaven. How much more the God of heaven who has given us everything. He asks us to serve him and then gives us everything so we can serve him. 
and to just, I, I just, we need to change our mind and our attitude about serving God. Yes, it's a duty, but it's a joy. Yes, it's a responsibility, but it's a joy. Amen. Amen. Yes, it's a responsibility, but we get to serve the God of heaven. Amen. Amen. We get to. Got to change that from we have to to we get to. We get to. Serve willingly, serve with a perfect heart, serve with fear, serve with gladness. Somebody give me the real time because I don't have the real time. 7.03, well, mine says 6.53, so we still got time, amen. <laughs> I'm about 10 minutes behind then, all right. Then we need to serve, look at Joshua chapter 24. Got a couple more that I'll give you tonight. Joshua chapter number 24. If we're going to serve the master right, we need to have the right attitude about service. Willing mind, perfect heart, fear, gladness. Look at Joshua 24.14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Let me talk about that matter of truth for a minute. There's a lot of wild thinking about what is doing something for God and what isn't. There's a lot of wild thinking nowadays about, uh, I, I'm amazed to me, you know, it, it's amazing to me, some of the things that people consider serving the Lord. And they're doing it sincerely, by the way. They have sincerity. They really feel like they're serving the Lord. But what they're doing goes against Scripture. So we need to have sincerity about what we're doing. But sometimes you can be sincerely wrong. That's right. I know a lot of religious people that are very sincere about their faith. I mean, they are doing things... You go down to Mexico and you see the people that are going up and down those stairs on their knees until they're bloody. At Easter time, you see them taking those whips and you see them whipping themselves till they, they're, just, they're just beaten and they're bloody and they're doing it sincerely. When we were in Mexico City, we went to Puebla and going up the mountain, it was around Christmas time, they do this thing where they go up the mountain and they carry these statues of Joseph and Mary and the baby heavy statues on their back. One of the most poignant pictures that one of the men that was there that took, that told the truth, is we were about two-thirds of the way up, and off to the side was this man laying on the ground, and those statues were just off to the side. He couldn't make it. We said, that's religion. Trying to make it on your own, and you just can't make it. But those people are so sincere. In fact, when it comes to sincerity, a lot of times they're more sincere than we are. But they're wrong. That's right. And so we need to serve him with sincerity. We, we don't need to be doing it with ulterior motives. We don't need to be doing it to bring ourselves glory. We don't need to be doing it so that we can lord it over others how much more spiritual we are. We need to do it with sincerity. We're doing it just to serve the master. We have to make sure that it's true. It's true. It has to be true service. It can't be religious service. It can't be what we want to do for God. It has to be what God wants and has to be based on the word of God. Amen. That, that at Easter time, watching those men just all day flog themselves. I don't know if any of you ever seen that on the news, but if they just flog themselves till they're just, they're just bloody, their whole back is bloody. They end up with scars and welts. And they do it in, in supposed to be, there, there's places where they'll have people actually literally nail themselves to the cross. And you say that's sincerity. Yes, but it's not the truth. And many times we as Christians, we do the same thing. We, you know, well, I just, I just sincerely wanted to help that person. Yes, but you went against scripture to do it. You didn't follow the scriptural way to do things. So if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Let's do it the true way. Let's do it sincerely and with gladness and with fear and with a perfect heart and a willing mind.
one day will stand before God and hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I wonder how many of us are going to have regrets when we hear that. I wonder how many of us are going to say, I could have been a better servant. I could have done better. I could have done more. I could have had a better attitude about what I did. Might be a good opportunity for us tonight to, first of all, recommit ourselves to the master. And then the second thing that maybe we need to do is say, God, not only do I need to recommit myself, but I need to have the right attitude. And I need to do it for the right reasons. It's a night to call the servants to servanthood. Not entitled, not I deserve, not what I want. What can I do for the master? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. With every head bowed, every eye closed. The invitation is already open. Maybe there's some folks that just need to come to the altar. Just get bow before a holy God. Say, God, I want to be the right type of servant. I want to serve you, and I want to do it right. Maybe some of you are looking at your, your level of service for the Savior and saying, you know what? I'm not, I'm not the right type of servant. Could be that some of you have another God that you've placed before God. Another master in place of God. Maybe you need to come and just say, God, help me with my service. However the Lord spoke to your heart in this service, in this message, let's all stand together. Brother Trey begins to sing. Sister Linda begins to play. Lord spoke to your heart. Why don't you come and talk to the Lord about your service for Him? Hear ye the Master's call. serving him folks Every he's the master Wednesday night, 7.30. If you're able to come, online should always just be a supplement in case you need it. But other than that, we ought to be in the house of God. And so we'll be back on Wednesday night at 7.30.